What's up everybody? It's Ace Poker. For those that don't know, I'm a 21 year old poker player from New Jersey. If you're back, thanks for watching again. I got a super interesting video for you guys. It's a new series where every 20 vlogs, I'm gonna take my top five hands from those 20 vlogs, re-edit them, re-go over them. It's gonna be nothing but big pots, huge hands, super interesting. So let's get right into it and I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, everyone, welcome back. Sorry for no actual vlog this week, but I think this will be better. I'm still having a little bit of trouble finding the right casino to play at, but I hope you guys enjoy, and we're starting it off with a banger with my favorite hand that I have ever played in my whole entire poker career. So I pick up ace-jack offsuit in middle position, raise it to $20, and get three callers. The table's been playing super loose, so I wanted to open loose and get in there. The flop comes 5-7-7, which isn't the best flop for our hand, but... For some reason, I decide to see bet for $20, and the gentleman to my left who's wearing the gloves decides to call. And just as a preface, I saw him call king three offsuit and crack aces a couple hands earlier. So yeah, let's get involved. The turn now comes a beautiful jack, giving us top pair, and now I decide to bet out for $55, and again, he decides to make the call. So not really sure where we're at, because like I said, my opponent's been playing crazy, so he definitely could have a seven in range. But we're looking to see a good card on the river, and we get it. We see the jack. We have essentially the nuts. We're only losing to four of a kind. So I think this is a great spot to go massive. My opponent's been doing a lot of crazy things. He might call us super, super light here. So I decide to bet $325. It's back on my opponent, and he asks, is it on me? He doesn't snap fold or snap call. He asks how much it is, and I'm like, oh my goodness, am I going to get paid here? And then he does something that I would never imagine in my wildest dreams. He raises to $650. I waste no time as you see. I snap go all in. And now my opponent goes into the tank. He asks how much it is, how much extra it is. Then he says, just tell me how much it is so I can pay him. So I'm like, oh my goodness, this is awesome. I'm going to get paid. Now the dealer takes forever to count the chips, like literally years, what seemed like years. This whole recording was like eight minutes. So I'm like, oh my goodness, please just give him that count so he can call, please. I'm getting super frustrated, super antsy. Then the dealer asks him, are you going to call? What are you doing? Are you going to fold? And he says, well, I don't know what I'm doing yet. And I'm like, oh my goodness, if he folds because the dealer took forever, I'm going to lose my mind. And I was in such a tough spot because I wanted to blurt out like, dude, it's only $900, just call, like, what are you doing? But I didn't want him to be like, all right, you know what, I'm folding. So I just wanted to keep my mouth shut the entire time, but it was so frustrating. One of the guys to my left started to try to help him count, but I was like, dude, just stay out of it, please. Like, if anybody intervened and he wound up folding, I would have lost my mind. But eventually the dealer gives him the right count. He puts in the chips, he makes the call, he says, how could I fold, had the seven. And we get so lucky. We get a massive, massive pot. This is the biggest pot by far that I've ever played live. Ships our way, and I'm so excited. And stay tuned for the rest of the Big Hands this video. This singular pot, as well as this entire scene, as you guys see here, you guys were probably laughing, was just the craziest experience of my entire poker career. He also, after the hand, started saying, you know what, nice hand, dude, and he gave me a fist pump, and then he said, you know what, if I have to give my money to somebody, at least it's to you, and I was like, alright, thanks man, I appreciate that. Alright, in this next one, we actually have a premium hand in Pocket Kings. The hijack opens to $20 over a limp, and I decide to 3-bet to $80 in the cutoff. The middle position and the hijack both call, so we're headed three ways to an already juicy pot with $240 in the middle. The board looks just about as clean as it can get in Jack 9 3 Rainbow. Can't really ask too much of a better flop here. They both decide to check to me, and I decide to go for about half pot here at about $125, and it gets back to middle position. He calls pretty quickly, and the other player folds, so it's just me and him. It looks like, based off the pretty quick call, that he's got Jack 10, Queen Jack, so looking to avoid either of those on the turn. And we do, as it comes the perfect card in the Two of Hearts. And now my opponent decides to just go all in, and I snap call. And I'm going to rewind it here so I could show you guys again just how fast I call. Pay attention to the bottom right of the screen. <laughs> so yeah, is that the fastest snap call you've ever seen? We're headed to a river which looks disastrous in the Queen of Spades. So 10A gets there and Queen Jack now beats us. But he says just a 9 and we scoop in a massive pot with kings. I have no idea what he possibly could have had. Maybe 8, 9, 9, 10 of hearts. That kind of makes some sense as you know he would pick up a flush draw on the turn. But happy to pick up a massive one here and we're on to the next one. 
Downgrading slightly here in the pocket pair as we have pocket jacks, I open to $25 over a limp, and we get not one, not two, not three, but four callers. That's a recipe for disaster with a pocket pair, so we're headed five ways to a flop. Let's see if we can get a good one. It is important to note that the one opponent that we get into here sat down with a $1,000 chip, which usually means that they play higher stakes or just came from outside the casino, so I put that in the back of my mind as we head to a flop. And it appears decent in the 7-9-2 with two clubs, small blind and big blind check, now the next player decides to lead out for $50, a super interesting development already as no one really leads into the pre-flop aggressor in these games, so I think about it for a little while but decide to raise to $200. And now the player in the small blind goes all in for $800. Time to think about this for a little bit. As the next player tanks and then winds up eventually folding, I have a little bit of time to think, and I think he wouldn't be doing this with a set, maybe two pair in 7-9, but I just think he's got a huge combo draw and that's why he's trying to push all in. So I, I don't really like having the jack of clubs here, but I decide, you know what, let's call. I decide to call and my opponent immediately asks if we can run it twice, which is a good sign, but here at Parks at 2-5, you can only run it one time, so we're off to one board. I assume we have to fade something or hit a jack, I don't know yet, but the board comes out a seven and then a three, so it looks awesome, and my opponent flips over ace, 10 of clubs, so we nailed it on the head. He had a pretty big combo draw as he had an ace or any club, or he could have run a runner to straight, but happy to fade his outs there and scoop another massive pot with jacks. And man, do these feel good to rewatch and scoop in all these chips. I can't be a hypocrite though, I do have to show some losses, so spoiler alert, this one may be a loss. As we look down at King Queen Offsuit, there's a middle position open to 20. And I decided 3 bet to $80 out of the small blind here. Folds back around to the initial raiser, and he decides to be the only caller, so we're going heads up with a pot of about 180 in there already. Looking to see a good board, hit a king, hit a queen, and get paid, and we see practically the best board in the driest flop ever of king 5-3. After a little bit of deliberation here on the sizing, I decide to bet $60 as I think you definitely need to go small here, I go one third pot, because there's not much my opponent can have here, we pretty much smashed this board, ace king is going to 4 bet us preflop I'd assume, but my opponent does decide to call so maybe he's got a skeptical pocket pair like jacks. We see the 8 of diamonds on the turn and now it's another decision point. Should we bet? If we bet, what sizing should we do? Should we check here for deception? I decide I think it's time to bet again but again super super small, so I decide to bet out for only $100. And now my opponent goes into the tank, he thinks about it for a little while, he goes towards his chips, and he decides to raise to $300, something I was not expecting. Again, just like hands prior, I don't think he's got anything here. I decide to snap go all in, and he pretty much snap calls me. Not good. I don't know what he's got, but I think I'm definitely beat. We go to the river, which is the worst card in the deck, the ace of diamonds, and he flips over 10 deuce of diamonds. So he was drawing practically dead on the flop, picked up a diamond, and got there on the river. Yep, gotta love those folks. Tap the table, nice hand my friend, and we're on to the next. Don't worry, it gets better. We have aces now, we can't lose with those, right? It gets even better, there's a $10 straddle on, I'm next to act. I decide to make it 40, and we get a boatload of callers yet again. Another recipe for disaster. Let's see if we can get a good flop this time though. You can't get married to your high pocket pairs though, the best players know how to play them pre-flop and post-flop and know when to fold, know when to raise, know when to call. So let's try to navigate a flop here. We see Jack 8-2 Rainbow, seems pretty good to me. The small blind and big blind both decide to check and I bet $65. Gets back to the small blind who decides to call and now the big blind decides to call as well. So we only shed one player, uh, the player right to my left. I have no idea what I'm looking to fade, what I want to see on the turn, but I definitely know I don't really want to see a 7, a 9, a 10, a queen, a jack, a lot of cards I'm trying to fade here. But we're headed three ways to a turn here, which looks another good card as it comes the four of spades. 
And now I think for a little while and decide that $165 sounds like the price to go. The next player folds and then the big blind snap goes all in. And it's not a small one either. It's for my remaining $850. Okay, time to think about this one. Just like the Jacks earlier, he could have a strong combo draw, yes. He could have two pair somehow. He could have a set, pocket eights. Jacks would raise preflop, so I'm ruling out Jacks, so it's either eights or pocket twos for me. Don't think fours would continue the flop. Jack eight suited seems like a very likely hand because let's think about this. He's in the big blind. I raise, and there's two callers in front of him. He's getting a pretty good price to close out the action with a decent hand and go multi-ways. If I was in his shoes, I would totally be in there. So in my mind, I'm like, you know what? I'm really starting to think that he's got Jack 8 suited. I look over at the guy. He's an older gentleman, not exactly the OMC type. I've actually played with this guy before, but he is on the much tighter side. He's not going to put all of his money in with a draw. And I have posted this on TikTok, Instagram. So many comments are like, you're an idiot. He definitely has ace jack suited. Listen, we block that. Yes, the ace of spades is not accounted for, but I'm telling you this player type is not putting all of his money in on a draw. So I mull it over, I, I groan, I, I am in so much pain, I don't want to fold this hand, but I decide the best players have to make the best laydowns, so I fold. I don't want to tilt and lose $850 because then I'll seriously just get up and leave. I'll just keep the remaining $850 I have and keep playing. And honestly, this is like my hundredth time watching this hand, and I go back and forth every time on whether I really should have called or if the fold was the right decision, and I don't really know. I'm I'm very split. Usually I'm like, yes, that was a good decision, whether I raised, called, folded, went all in. I truly do not know. But what I will tell you is this. About 45 minutes later, a hand developed where he was in it and two other players were in it. The flop was 5-5-3, five, five, and it went bet, call, call. The turn came a 7, it went bet, he went all in again, the next player folded and the original Razor called, they showed their cards and he had pocket 7s for the stone cold nuts. So now after seeing that I'm like you know what, I think more and more like he had pocket 8s. So I don't know, I think I did make a good decision here, please again you guys have let me know on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter if you guys think this is a good fold. Drop the comments again, and if you haven't seen this hand, let me know. Please feel free to ridicule me. I don't care. I love the constructive criticism. So, as always, hope you guys enjoyed the hand. Another little cool segment I wanted to do is show you guys my profit and loss for the first 20 vlogs, and in vlogs 20 through 40, I'll redo this again. So right now, I'm at $15,354 profit. That's $114 an hour, $404 a session, and that comes to just about 134 hours. That's a lot of poker, but not as much as some other people. I definitely want to get out and play some more. I cashed 27 out of my 38 times, which comes out to 71%, which is pretty good. Heading over to location, I made money everywhere, but I've only played in three rooms. I'm going to start expanding. As you see, I can't film in any of these places now, so I need to find a new spot. Here are the days of the week. I just can't figure it out on Tuesday, I guess, but Friday, I kill it. And that's basically all from Borgata. I made basically all my money on Friday at Borgata. Here it is month by month. I did hit a little rough patch in March, but overall, we are positive. Green, green, green. Let's continue up this streak, and hopefully next time I update, it'll be about 30, 40, maybe $50,000 in profit. As always, I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you guys so much for your love and support. It means the world to me. And again, as always, have a blessed day and enjoy.